Hello, and welcome to an Art of Flipping book haul video. I purchased these books in an estate for $40 plus taxes, and will list them for $667. Included in this $667 is a $200 Bolo. It's a book set in the Ikea, that are in the Ikea bag for now. Let's have at it. I did not make it to the first day of this book sale. I didn't see the advertisement for it until middle of the morning during the first day. I made it to the second and final day, however, bright and early. I was only 15 minutes before the sale began and was number 16 in line. Fortunately, I was the only book buyer there for a while, and I was, I'm going to say, very surprised to walk into the main room and see two large books, four to ceiling bookcases still filled and looking exactly like they did in the advertisement for the sale. I suppose that's because the, during the first day, hardbacks were $2, paperbacks were a buck, and then on the next, on the second and final day of the sale, everything was half off. So I paid $40 for these 40 books. The sale was some distance away, and I might not have gone, but I decided I could also combine the trip with going to some thrift stores, which I'll show those hauls in a different video. Let's focus on the books right now. At least six of the books are clearly mistakes. The Cornell book, I did not notice the silver, really think about the silver footage damage. I thought it was about a $69 book. It goes for a tenth of that on Amazon these days. A new copy would go for 69 And there's some other textbooks or books that I found some damage on. So let's take these six out and get on with the discussion. I purchased a seventh book, which I've already placed in a very safe location that not even I can find it. It is misplaced. It's an 1878 Ger German language Bible, which, I ha which lacks a front cover. Actually, I wanted it. I want to use it as a guinea pig for a restoration project to learn how to restore leather-bound books that do not have a front board. So there's actually at least seven discards. The lighting in the room was rather poor. The bookshelf was away from an exterior window, and it was also in one of the main, really close to one of the main aisles of traffic. People had to cut by me. To, I spent approximately two hours at the estate sale and trying to be careful about not hauling home things I did not need. Uh, I still made some mistakes. I can easily live with those, though. Let me, uh, let me explain. Two of the books were purchased for personal use. John Brown's Body in a first edition, excuse me, a first printing of a second edition from the mid-1950s, and a book published in the USSR in approximately 1960. I think it's when I start looking it up or look at the language and translate it, it's going to be an elementary Russian book. The lady of the house, who I'm going to call the wife, she must have, uh, she attended Purdue University during the mid-1960s and was uh, studied English literature and Russian literature. She was also studying Russian and German. So I, she was fluent in at least two second languages and uh, was a very smart lady. The husband of the house, I found quite a few economics books uh, most of which were not worth much. I'll show you the exceptions. And I found a pile, I mean a huge stack, uh, beyond my, at least beyond my knees, of economics journals in, in one of the bedroom. And they were, on half price day, they would have been 10 cents a piece. I did not see that they would, well, we'll get to those later. The estate included quite a few textbooks, which consumed quite a bit of my time. I was at the sale for about two hours, and I've, as I've said, the lighting was not wonderful when it came down to some of the details, like the copyright dates and, and the number rows indicating which printing. These, This is a textbook in two volumes, about 17th century verse and prose. Volume one is 1660, 
excuse me, 1600 to 1660, and volume two is 1660 to 1700. It'll go for $45, even with extensive underlining and with the damp stain, it looks like coffee actually, on the top and bottom, excuse me, top and right exterior of volume two. So it pays to look at textbooks, but not terribly well. The estate also included quite a few very small books of poetry. You can see by my hand that this is not an eight and a half inch book. And most of them were published in the mid 1970s or later and just did not have much economic value, did not. The books at the estate sale included quite a few poetry books. Most were published in the mid-1970s, and after comping a couple of them, I just started skipping them. The Muses Library, these two books, are the Poems of Michael Drayton, Volume 2 and Volume 1. They're in nearly pristine condition, except this one's got some problems. Volume 2 has some problem, a tear on the they're in nearly pristine condition. Volume 1 is a near fine. Volume 2 is in the VG range with a tear up there where I'm showing you on the dust jacket. The comps, a lot of people would have skipped these books. The comps were $10 or $12 on ABE, and that was about it for what was offered, if I remember correctly, except one of the books had those were the individuals volumes, so we're looking at two volumes, and which can be lotted up conveniently. And probably, and much more importantly, the books that were listed on ABE, one of them didn't even have a dust jacket, and the other one was from a mass reseller giving all kinds of disclaimers about underlining and highlighting, and these are nice, clean books. I'm going to list the pair for $50 and see where it goes. I do not speak German, but Dre, D-R-E-I, Kameraden, K-A-M-E-R-A-D-E-N, means the three comrades. It's written by Eric Re Remarque, or I'm sorry, I've said I don't speak German, it has extensive pencil notes and also I'll list it for $10 because that's where similar books are priced, but I this will be a very long tail item. I'd be surprised if it sold in two years. Eugene O'Neill's Nine Plays, published in 1932. It's a first edition, first printing, and I believe it was public. You can see how decorative the spine is. I believe it was uh, published without a dust jacket, but it's only, it's only $20, and you can see that it has some sun fading, and that appears to be pretty typical, this graduated sun fading, very typical in this book from what I see in other listings. Another book that has the what I consider cool artwork printed down into it is Babbitt by Sinclair Lewis. This is a first edition without a dust jacket, and unfortunately, it's the third printing. If this was a first edition, first printing, a true first edition, in other words, it'd probably be worth around $200. It's got some condition issues with the hinges, if I remember correctly. I'm going to list it for $18 or best offer. Among the older books were two Nathaniel Hawthorne novels, published, reprinted in 1931. These, both of these books are in near fine condition. They're really nice. Maybe some minor corner bumps and indentations at the bumps at the bottom of the spine, but nice vivid boards. I'm going to price them at $25 each because they're in nice condition. The Man from Glengarry is a fairly common book. The supply is probably greater than the demand, which shoves the price of this one down to around $12. But this inside the book, illustrates an which you can see lesson. the tip of it protruding from out from the top exterior, is a bookmark. And I found one available for sale on eBay that is torn. And this one has a condition issue too. You can see that it is bent at about 45 degrees. And that has resulted in a tear right along there where I'm trying to zoom in on it a little bit. Sorry about my shadow being on it. The bookmark was listed for 15 bucks. 
in, even with the tear on it. So this goes to show you that what's inside the book might be worth more than the book itself. This is a good time to discuss the $225 to $275 bolo that I found. When I saw a picture of the preview of the estate sale, I saw the distinctive color patterns on the spine of the history, excuse me, the story of civilization by Will and Ariel Durant. It has probably sold 2 million books worldwide. It's an 11 volume set, so factor that in. Even 200,000 sets worldwide in up to nine languages is not only quite an accomplishment, it should be quite a glut on the market. It's not. Although these books were popped, this set was promoted heavily at Barnes & Noble and mall bookstores back in the day, I'd say the 70s or 80s, and was in the Book of the Month Club for a while and some other book clubs. It is still in very heavy demand. It, the Durant spent approximately 40 years of their life in the 1930s, and they didn't complete it until 1975. The set that I found is more 200-ish because it only contains 10 of the volumes. I will find vol the missing volume 11 for anything from $16 to $20 if I'm not able to trade for it at a used bookstore when I dump off some of my less attractive books and try to trade them in. The prices for the set, looking at a Keepa graph on Amazon, it's about $175 steadily in good condition, which isn't saying, good condition doesn't say a whole lot on Amazon. Uh, it's not ABE book standards, and it's not the crazy eBay standards, which really lack a, a consistent gray scale. And a very good set on Amazon averages $275 on the Keepa graph. The set that I found I would say is above good but is not raven definitely above good on the Amazon or what you get in the real world on eBay standards. There's no underlining, there's no damage to this to the books except some occasional bumped bent or bumped corners and indented top or bottom of the spines. There's some tears including a small torn off section along the spine on one of the dust jackets. The dust jackets on those take a pretty heavy beating because there's over 13,000 pages in the 11 volumes. The set has a book sales rate or BSR on Amazon of 1,191,792 books. And according to the uh, conversion table at conversion calculator over at TCK, that's Tom uh, cat kangaroo publishing tck publishing dot probably dot com their calculator says that a bs that bsr means that approximately four books a month will be sold so there's only a couple months supply on amazon right now and i would think that one of the i believe that one of the reasons is because amazon greatly increased the storage fees and a lot of the FBA crowd is exiting the building. And furthermore, a BSR of over one point of over a million, uh, that pretty much is out of the territory of the people you see. Most of the people you see with the scanners uh, at, when you're at the thrift stores or the estate sales. Obviously, I expect a profit from their naive behavior. I mentioned that the lady that I call the wife uh, studied extent Russian literature and Russian language extensively based on the books that I saw. And here are books by Vladimir Nakabov, uh, Glory, which is in beautiful condition, although it's a book of the month club edition, believe it or not, from 1971. I'll price it at $30. I remember back in the day, in the 1970s, I remember back in the day during the, say, mid-1970s to mid-1980s when I would scour the thrift store for books for my family and for personal use. I would also take books that looked interesting and go trade them in for, uh, for books for hob as a hobby. And back in the day, a book club edition was worthless. 
Times have changed. Uh, Glory is worth a listing at about $30. It's a near fine copy, and including a near fine dust jacket. It should sell for something pretty close to that. This haul also includes King, Queen, Knave by the same author. Incidentally, Mr. Vladimir Nakabov also wrote uh, Lolita, for which he obviously is very famous. Uh, King, Queen, Knave has some problems with the dust jacket, some tears and some issues. So I only graded it good plus, and I'll list this book for $10. Another book club edition book is Pearl S. Buck's The Three Daughters of Madame Liang, and it's a book club edition. I will list it for $18. Another book is a deluxe edition, first pu- first printing, first edition of This Is How You Lose Her by Jeanette Diaz. I will list it for $18. One of the sort of eerie things about shopping in an estate sale is finding things that are clearly family history, which the family, I'm assuming they left children who survived them, had no interest in. These are two books of common prayer in the Episcopal Church. This book is a 1944 edition with beautiful leather, Clean pages, only some personal information in the front. It's a gift from a church given to somebody and to a woman in 1952. And this is the 1892 edition, which has some uh, hinge issues that I would need to fix. And it's probably worth fixing. A mid 60s book would go for about $20. This common prayer book right here should, in average condition, go for about $40. I'm probably going to put 65 on it because this thing's in really nice shape. The older book that needs a repair, after the repair, I'm not sure exactly what it will be worth in its current condition or with the repair. I have seen copies listed for as high as $140. Uh, Broader than a bolo, much more useful to my viewers. I want to tell you that Quite often, the Bibles aren't worth money, but the miniature prayer books, the miniature hymnals uh, can be worth a lot, can be worth quite a bit. And to keep your eyes open and don't discount looking at something just because it's prayer or religious, especially older stuff in nice or antique stuff in repairable condition. Finally, we I've have two investment books. The well written I'm calling the Ford investment books was an economist classics or had or extensive very economics niche books. training. Uh, and you should always collected papers, always compare them uh, and research them. And this is stock market two, logic studies and social uh, theory. Norman Fosbach, and it's, it's sold. There's eventually a sold a ton of copies. It's very authoritative for what it was at the time. But this is the second the printing of the first paperback uh, edition so from 1977. Available. I'll put $20 on it. Has, it is it's in, a fourth printing. Uh, I'm going to put $35 in very good on plus it. condition. Uh, probably listed as near fine. It's a nice copy. The final book that I found is Wall Street Insiders. How you can use the Wall Street Insiders by Perry Wysong. It is a third printing. There were only 10,000 copies in the second printing and five in the first printing. So there, it's pretty scarce. I found one on the web listed at $30. Mine is at least as over nice two as theirs. On so a round trip for to get to this estate sale and two hours at the estate sale. And about a day, uh, let's say at least an eight-hour day, of running the comps on the books. Because it's not as simple as running a barcode. There aren't barcodes on. Probably one or two of these books would have a barcode. And there are not even ISBN numbers, which were not introduced until 1972. And a good bit of the value runs in which whether or not it's a true first edition or whether or not it's a subsequent printing. It can be a first edition subsequent later printing and still have value if the book is famous enough, like uh, Babbitt. And the search engines don't really recognize. And putting the profitability of potential profits of these purchases into perspective, you have to remember an awful lot of this stuff the vast majority of these books are long tail, including very long tail. I do expect the 
225 to 275 dollar bolo set to sell within six months however so I'll come out okay right there but to really start compensating for my time of researching and uh, getting up into the profit level some of the other stuff will need to move so having explained that selling antiquarian and vintage books can require a good bit of work and will reward you with nice profit margins it's not a get-rich-quick scheme I am happy, I'm proud to do this, and, but it is an enjoyable way to supplement your income. So, besides the large book set referred to in the title of this video, I've shown nine other examples of books to be on the lookout for that are worth listing at at least $25 that I found. Happy hunting out there, everybody.